Hi everyone, it's Shia, a fellow at the Wild Center, and today I'm bringing you guys a timber rattlesnake watercolor tutorial. First, we're going to start off with materials. So I'm using an 11 by 15 inch watercolor paper, but use whatever you have. If you're using watercolor, a thicker paper is preferred. And then, since I'm using watercolor, I have an 8 color watercolor palette. I have brushes of various sizes to do all of my different details. I have a pencil for outlining my drawing, and then a couple of different types of erasers. And finally, some water for my watercolor and a napkin to dab my brushes on. To start, I draw out the head. Venomous snakes, like rattlesnakes, typically have an arrow-shaped head. For a general shape, I start off with a wedge, carving and extending as needed. Snakes are one of my favorite things to draw because their bodies are so simple, but the curling of them can be really dynamic and varied. If you want, before you start your drawing, in a sketchbook or a scrap piece of paper, experiment with different body positions. Timber rattlesnakes have very thick bodies relative to their lengths, especially in comparison to many other snakes. As you draw the snake's twisting body, starting from the head, draw a line along the spine of the snake. That way it's easier to know whether the underbelly or back of your snake is visible. Next, start drawing the scales of your snake. This can be really time consuming, but I find that it makes it easier down the road when we start painting. But feel free to skip this step and move directly to painting. At that stage, you can decide how much detail you want to add. For the underbelly scales of your snake, draw curving parallel lines. On your first pass, do a very light brown wash, and then add in shadows with a slightly darker brown. Along the spine of the snake, paint in a rusty brown line. The pattern on the scales is somewhat striped, but there's a lot of individual variation among timber rattlesnakes, as well as variation due to habitat so the pattern doesn't have to be perfect or exact. The general shape of the pattern is three interlocking diamonds, one in the middle and two on each side leading to the underbelly. I want my snake's scales to have a lot of depth, so I'm gonna do lots of different layers of color over them. So after I've finished the first dark layer, I do a coppery color over the rest of the scales, and then over the dark scales I once again go over with an even darker brown. And once I've finished that, I do a brassy brown over the more coppery color on the snake. To balance my colors, I go over the brassy portion that I just did with a more dull grayer brown so that it kind of melds with my darker scales a little better. After pulling out details on the snake's face, go over the entire body of the snake with a wash of water. This fills in any gaps that there might be between scales and just makes the color pattern more cohesive. Once your water wash is dried, go over the dark scales again with an even darker brown, almost bordering on black. As you move along the snake, pull out some scales in the lighter portion of the pattern just to give some of them a little more depth. If any portions of the snake's body are overlapping, make sure you fill in some shadows to give the appropriate amount of depth. The eye of your snake should be a greenish gray color and the pupil is elongate. And there we have it, a finished painting of a timber rattlesnake. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope that you guys share your own creations using the hashtag TheWildCenter.